What's going on you guys? My name is Ben Can, and today we're gonna to be doing a huge install on my 1965 Mustang. I'm totally stoked and I have a lot of different companies helping me, which I'm super thankful for. But before we get started, I really wanna just go over all the parts that we're gonna be installing today. So I've always wanted a scatter shield. I've been terrified that, you know, my clutch or flywheel will blow up and I'll lose my feet. It's just been in the back of my mind for a while. And if you guys are subscribed to me, you know I kind of beat on my car. So I definitely want something that can withstand uh, a catastrophic failure. So I reached out to Holly and they sent out a Lakewood bell housing, which I'm totally stoked on because, you know, it's historical ties to drag racing and because it's red. It looks really cool, even though you'll never be able to see it unless if it's on a lift. I love it. Holly also sent me a new clutch fork, which did not come gold. I painted it. I love gold. So <laughs> that's another thing that you'll never be able to see unless if you're underneath the car. So then I was talking to a bunch of people and they're like, you know what? You should just install a new clutch while you're at it. And then I was thinking about it. The previous owner installed a center force clutch in into my car, I think in 1991, which you know, is like 30 years ago. So yeah, it probably does need a new clutch. So I reached out to Center Force because I love the clutch that's already in my car and I wanna keep that feel. So they sent out their dual friction clutch assembly kit, which is pretty cool. And I'm excited to put it to some use. They also sent out a new steel flywheel, which was cool because now I don't need to resurface my old one. They also sent me out a new throw out bearing. And then I personally bought a new pilot bearing. And then I bought some ARP bolts just to make it nice. So I wanna give a huge shout out to Holly and Center Force for sending me out the parts. I'll leave all the information below in my bio. We are also not gonna be doing the install in my backyard. Alden American actually offered me their shop space to do the install. If you guys don't know, Alden American is a suspension parts company. They do amazing coilovers. I have a kit on my car and I'm even more grateful that Gary Nelson at Alden American is gonna help us install all the parts. He's an amazing guy. So we're gonna head over to Alden American and we'll see you guys there. So we just got down to Alden American. This is my friend Gary. Hello. We work together a lot on filming little videos for Alden American and we've kind of just become friends over the years and I just want to thank you so much for You're having us welcome. down here and to Alden American for letting us use their facilities, but I'm super excited. Let's get started. So before we decided to lift up the Stang, my dad removed the shifter from my car. Then we brought the Mustang up, removed the drive shaft, and quickly bagged up the transmission because it would leak out fluid. Gary then removed the transmission cross member and then supported it with the transmission jack. We don't have one of these either. You don't have a trans jack? <laughs> I thought everybody did. I wish we had one of these at home. Well, I guess a whole lift in general. My dad's got the biggest putty knife ever. Yeah, it gets into small crevices. Then Gary started removing the transmission bolts. We quickly realized that many of them were not really tight and I was even missing a bolt. So that was not good. Oh, that one's tight. You had one tight one. That's all that matters. Yeah. Two loose ones, one missing one, and one tight one. Then it was time to remove the speedometer cable, which hasn't been working for many years, but maybe when we put it back in, it will work again. And then it was time to take out the transmission, which came out pretty easy. But then we ran into the issue of the exhaust being in the way, which we kind of knew was going to be an issue, but we were feeling a little risky. So we disconnected the headers and their gaskets just like completely crumbled and disintegrated. And then we pretty much just disconnected the whole exhaust and let it hang on the rear axle. Then it was time to fully remove the good old four speed transmission, which was incredibly filthy. We'll just set it on the ground right here. Okay. Oh, a little trans. Automatic swap going in. No. <laughs> <laughs> then Gary started removing all the bell housing bolts, which also didn't seem too tight. Who knows guys, if we just left my car how it was, maybe the whole thing would fall apart. Then Gary removed the starter, which always makes me laugh because those things are so dense and heavy, even though they're so small. Then it was time to remove the bell housing, which was actually super light compared to what we're about to put in the car. When you have a minor adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> then Gary started removing all the clutch assembly bolts and it came off with ease. The funniest part was that the pilot bushing just flew out. Those things are typically super annoying to remove, but I guess we didn't have to bring out the bread and grease. Then Gary removed all the flywheel bolts and then took off the separator plate. I was worried that my rear engine seal was going to be leaking, but it turned out to not really be leaking, so we just decided not to touch it. So then Gary test fitted the new separator plate and we realized that it was going to rub against some of the headers. So Gary marked it with a paint pen where it would be rubbing and then shaved down the metal in the problematic areas. Gary did a great job and made sure there were no jagged edges 
switches so that it wouldn't cut someone in the future. You don't want that. So then Gary put it back on the car and checked with the light to check for clearance. And then it turned out to be totally clear. Then my dad got really excited that Gary let him use All American's part washer and he started cleaning some of the parts that we took off the car. My dad loves cleaning so he made everything spotless and perfect. I know deep down in his heart he wants to get one for the house and just clean off all his bike parts. Then Gary gently hammered in the new pre-grease pilot bearing and then it was time to put on the new steel center force flywheel. Gary started preparing the new ARP flywheel bolts by putting on a little bit of fastener assembly lubricant just below the head of the bolt and then put a little bit of Loctite on the threads. Gary put the flywheel in the car and started tightening the bolts down. He incrementally torqued down the flywheel bolts. Then Gary cleaned off the flywheel and made it spotless. Look at that clutch. They bolted it. <laughs> when you have to unbolt your clutch out of a box. From the cardboard. Gary of course used the clutch alignment tool that was provided in the kit to make sure everything was aligned properly. And then it was time to install the new clutch assembly, which looked amazing. There's no better feeling than seeing new parts on your car. Gary then started tightening down the clutch assembly and used Loctite on the bolts. After the bolts were fairly tight, he torqued them all down. Then it was time to prepare the bell housing. We were a little confused about the instructions because the diagram showed multiple parts going together that weren't supposed to go together. There were multiple brackets for different types of clutch forks, but Gary decided to measure both bell housings and we verified the correct setup. And then we reused the wire from the old clutch fork and put on my new gold clutch fork with a little bit of grease. Gary tried to attach the wire to the new bracket, but it didn't want to hook up. So Gary had to slightly bend the bracket for it to accept the wire. Hey, you want to put just a little bit of grease. And then it was time to install the new throw up bearing. Then poor Gary had to carry this insanely heavy bell housing over to the car. It's not exactly weight reduction, but it's worth having healthy feet. Gary and I started laughing about how ridiculous it was to put this insanely heavy bell housing on the car. I felt bad watching him struggle, <laughs> but it was like the most awkward, dense thing to handle. I don't know. No, no. After a little bit, Gary noticed that the bell housing was going to rub on the headers. So he marked the areas with a paint pen and then started grinding off the problematic areas. However, as Gary started tightening down the bell housing, we discovered another issue and Gary unfortunately had to remove the bell housing. The bell housing has a hole that's designed for the clutch linkage to go through to meet up with the clutch fork. However, my linkage had its own mind, didn't like the angle of the hole. So Gary decided to completely remove this ear on the bell housing. Everything Gary grinded, I went over with a paint pen because I hate Rust, even though no one will probably ever see it except when it's on a lift. As you can see, the clutch linkage no longer has any interference. Gary then had to grind off the same hole on the separator plate. That was the easiest it went in. It's almost like he did this before. Yeah. He then started tightening down all the new bell housing hardware. It made me laugh how many bolts went on this bell housing, but I guess that's how they ensure it's blast proof. Although I think we might need a crazier engine to blow up this new setup. Then Gary installed my starter back on the car. Gary and my dad also cleaned off the headers so that we would have a perfect surface for the new gaskets. Then my dad drained the transmission. I wanted to replace the trans fluid since it has been over five years since the last time we did it. Look at the crate bowing. What do you mean bowing? Look at, look at the side of it. And then it was time to put the transmission back in the car. It took a little bit of wiggling and force, but eventually the transmission went right in. Gary made sure the transmission bolts were tight this time. We didn't want to end up like last time with missing or loose transmission bolts. Ugh. Gary then hooked up the broken speedo cable and installed the transmission cross member. Gary was also super cool and put on new high quality nuts and washers from his large collection that he hides in his shop drawers. I swear he has any part possible in his drawers. Then it was time to hook up the exhaust again. Thankfully, my dad ran down to the parts store and picked up some new exhaust gaskets. Instead of using traditional gaskets, we use graphite gaskets, which are supposedly way better. They are super thick, so hopefully I'll no longer have an exhaust leak. Gary also put on some anti-seize on the exhaust bolts. Gary also adjusted my clutch linkage to get rid of any slack. We also noticed that my clutch linkage was missing a spring, so I need to order one. I'm so stoked on how all these new parts look. Gary's totem pole. <laughs>
Gary then installed the drive shaft back onto the car and greased the U-joints. Gary then put new fluid in the transmission. And then we lowered down the car and my dad hopped in and installed the shifter back into the Mustang. We then made sure the car properly shifted gears and we were ready to hit the road. It was awesome to finish the whole project in one day. All right, so we just finished. Gary is the man. He did everything so well. And even stuff we filmed off camera, it was 100% amazing. So thank you so much, Gary. You're I really welcome. appreciate it. You're welcome. Go give it a little bit of a test drive and see how it works and let me know. Concrete guarantee, it hit the concrete, so guarantee's over. So guys, it's been a few days since we did the install, but it is so fun to drive my car now. I didn't even know how bad it was until we put in the new clutch assembly, adjusted the clutch linkage, and did all that. But now, oh my God, it is so fun to drive. Like, it is just so smooth. I still need to get like a short throw shifter, like a her shifter, but the problem is I don't know if they necessarily make it for my T10 transmission. There's so much variation over the years. Uh, you know, they can't make a kit for everything, but I, I need to do more research because that would be like the next step. But right now, I am just so happy. Like this car is fun to drive. Well, there's a few things I need to do. One is I want to put in uh, like one of those modern power steering systems in this car. You know, the manual steering was fun for a while, but I just, it's just not fun to park, especially at car shows. It's kind of embarrassing. Like I, I can barely park this car. Like I'm just like, wrenching my arms around it's just embarrassing so i think the newer power steering systems are pretty much like leak proof and i'm very interested in doing one of those but besides that the car is really fun like i'm really enjoying it well there's actually one more thing we're doing to the car i won't say it now but it should make the car a lot more fun to drive but after i fix that and the power steering this car honestly is going to be perfect hi oh, man. Enjoy your show. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I bought a model from your dad, too. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Holly and Center Forest for making this happen, and to Gary at Alden American and my dad. Without them, this project would not have happened, and I am just so happy, and I really hope that this video was able to teach you guys something. But with that being said, I'll see you guys in another video, and I think I'm gonna cruise my car for a little bit. It's a nice day, beautiful weather, no clouds, nothing, just pure sunshine. So we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>